We are recording. Welcome to the CTSC webinar for October 24, 2016. I'm your host, Jeanette Dopheide. Today's topic is Science or Security, presented by Dr. George Strawn. He's the director of National Academy's Board for Research Data and Information. CTSC is the NSF Cybersecurity Center of Excellence, and these webinars are part of its mission to deliver high-quality, actionable guidance regarding cybersecurity to the NSF community. More information about CTSC can be found at trustedci.org. Before we begin, I have a few items to note. First, this presentation is being recorded. Second, participants are welcome to ask questions during the session using the chat box and we already tested that out. I just want to show you, type your questions there. And we will also have time at the end of the presentation to accept questions as well. And with that, I will hand off the microphone to George. Uh, good morning, George. Welcome. Good morning, and thank you for having me. I uh, have sort of whimsically titled this presentation, Science or Security, for reasons that many people say, oh, the more security we pay for, the less science we can do. I'll comment on that in due course. Uh, just to note that, uh, as you note, I am with the National Academy right now, but I'm retired from uh, the NIDRD interagency uh, IT coordination activity, which I was doing on detail from NSF, where I was for a long time before retiring from them. And I was at Iowa State University before I retired from them even further. So, so far I've failed at retirement and uh, am happy to be with you today. Uh, you'll note that I'm going to talk about anecdotes, observations, and then looking forward to research for the next generation of IT security, which the uh, NIDRD interagency organization has been working on for the last few years. So when I broke into this business many, many years ago, IT security meant keeping the machine door locked and putting the backup tapes in another building. How things have changed. Well, the rest of computing has changed too, so I guess IT security uh, has changed along with us. We started changing when time sharing came in on big machines and floppy disk came in on small machines. That complicated security, but we, we the people I knew didn't uh, look forward to see the uh, nasty things that are happening now. Uh, we, Looking back, we can see that it was probably a mistake that the Internet was, uh, was um, uh, put out with uh, no attention to security. The Morris worm also might have warned us, but again, we, we really didn't, uh, didn't foresee the future. Uh, in the uh, late 90s, we had a, a national organization called the President's Information Technology Advisory Committee. And as late as the 1990s, one of the captains of industry who was a member of that committee said, well, our customers want simpler and faster networks. Security makes them more complicated and slower. The government will have to take the lead. And so nobody took a lead for quite a while in addressing the general conditions of security. Our interagency group, NIDR, stood up a specific program on computer security and information assurance in 2005 and has been diligently working on uh, security from a federal government standpoint since that point in time. And of course, the US government is a lead customer uh, of IT equipment and can sometimes direct activities by saying it won't buy equipment unless it has the following following characteristics. Uh, I, uh, in my uh, time at NSF, I was the CIO from 2003 to 2009. I presume you all know what CIO stands for. Career is over. Uh, occasionally also called Chief Information Officer. I had a number of uh, entity activities in that capacity uh, relating to security. The first uh, is an anecdote when I, uh, uh, in the early part of my tenure when one of the nasty viruses was affecting uh, 
people and taking down their systems, I received assurances from our security people that uh, A, our firewall was keeping the uh, virus out, and B, if, even if it did happen to get carried in on a uh, uh, visiting computer, that all our machines were patched so there wouldn't be any problem. Well, to make a long story short, shortly after I was getting that assurance, we were flat on our back for 36 hours uh, when the, the virus did, in fact, affect us. And when I asked the security people uh, what, what was wrong, they said, well, it looks like it was carried in on a foreign computer. I said, yes, but you told me that uh, uh, the machines were patched, and if that happened, it wouldn't be any problem. Well, they said what we meant is we told our users to patch their machines. So uh, if uh, they didn't, uh, that's not our fault. Well, that was an attitude, early attitude of security people. And I assure you that attitude no longer exists. Uh, and um, uh, But even internal changing along that line of whose responsibility is what was uh, one of the early questions as we tried to struggle with the idea of, of IT security. Well, one of the things the CIO was required to do was, uh, in this period of time, was name a senior security official at the federal agency. I made uh, what I considered to be a, a pretty good decision that um, IT security was so important it had to be a line function, not a staff function. So I named our uh, Division Director of Information Systems as the uh, chief uh, senior security official. And uh, that meant that um, she not only had the responsibility, she had the people who directly reported to her who were responsible for implementing our security. And one of the things that one of the decisions that she made going forward was that um, we had to have external help. We hired a penetration test uh, consultants from the outside to obviously do what they do, penetrate your system, and then report the results to you. Um, at, at least at that point in time, it was money well spent. In fact, she decided it was the best money we spent on security to have that external help examine our system for weaknesses and uh, uh, proceed in that fashion. As you know, during that period of time, privacy became another uh, important thing. Privacy sort of crept up on us after security had already become an issue. Well, I, I had to, I, turns out, had to become the chief privacy official as part of my CIO duties. And we became very focused on the PII acronym, Personally Identifying Information. And um, we, we focused rather narrowly our privacy concerns on, well, can we make sure that uh, PII information is not uh, obtainable in hacks of our system. But in any event, um, we did that. And uh, in a certain sense, the CIA of uh, confidentiality, integrity, and accessibility became capital C I A. Obviously, it's all of the above, especially these days. You'll note, I'm sure, as I have, that in the last few days, a major DDoS attack occurred, uh, where the among the millions of of hosts which launched the attack, uh, devices which are part of the incipient Internet of things were apparently uh, compromised and included in the, the rather extensive DDoS attack. So once again, our, uh, our circumstances are getting ever more complicated, not ever more simple. So what types of things uh, did I see during my CIO period? Um, the, uh, beyond the one that I mentioned already of our internal uh, failure to um, take responsibility for patching the systems. Uh, uh, incident one that I'll mention is that uh, a bunch of NSF-funded computers at a major university some years ago were implemented in a DDoS attack. And uh, we had some people who said that uh, they were going to uh, 
call the public's attention to the fact that NSF computers were being um, improperly um, uh, controlled at universities. That resulted in our giving a grant to the EDUCAUSE organization to help universities in general increase their posture in security. Incident two uh, related to the hack attack on major NSF supported facilities and other places around the country. Uh, but due to the, um, the particular NSF facility that was attacked, NSF decided to make a grant to initiate a series of cybersecurity summits. And I gave this talk, an earlier version of this talk, at the cybersecurity summit last summer. Uh, they continue to this day and uh, seem to be well received by the community as we grapple together with how to, uh, how to improve security. Just to mention the third attack that, uh, that I was experienced with, our research station at South Pole was uh, hacked and data was stolen. This was an example of uh, somebody who was, really didn't know where he was but got in some place, stole the data, and then offered to sell it back to us. Uh, they, they were told that, well, this was scientific data that was going into the public record, so they were welcome to keep it. So that didn't uh, particularly hurt us at that point in time. It did require the uh, CIO to make an investigatory meeting to South Pole Station to check into uh, IT security on our very extensive polar program activities. And um, for those of us who have gotten to make the trip to the South Pole, we typically describe it as a trip of a lifetime. So that particular incident had uh, positive outcomes for me. And I would say for NSF as well, because subsequent to that break-in, uh, NSF did invest more in polar uh, program security, and uh, things are uh, things have have been quite a bit better since that point in time. So these were all cases where the the, the hazards of security uh, only amounted to red faces when we were embarrassed that uh, that others had had hacked into our systems. Uh, it can get worse, as you as you well know. Um, but because of that, let let me just make a few general observations. Cybersecurity is a little like airport security. Uh, the most important thing is to uh, show that you're concerned about security and you have the appearance of providing security. That's a somewhat cynical comment. Uh, but it's where things start. You've got to show the flag and hope that you're doing is everything that you can to uh, to uh, shore things up. But as my second point states, cybersecurity is a little like the uh, Veterans Administration. Uh, just because you're underfunded is no excuse for not doing a perfect job. Congress enjoys uh, uh, complaining about jobs that aren't perfect uh, after not necessarily providing all the funds that would be required to make uh, for a perfect job. So it's, uh, and, and this, this makes cybersecurity very much like all other items uh, of, of concern since there's seldom a, uh, enough money to do everything that you thought you should. I used to like the joke, not entirely a joke, that people like me who are in charge of cybersecurity should keep their necks clean because it'd be an embarrassment to go to the chopping block with a dirty neck. So uh, knowing that we're in a, uh, uh, a situation where, uh, where uh, when something bad happens, we're going to have to stand up and take responsibility is the, is the point of that uh, cynical comment. Well, what about what about security in general? At thirty thousand feet, of course, security is a system problem. System is composed of interacting components, many of which, maybe most of which, are subsystems. The whole concept of systems engineering and, and system science and systems analysis is is still not not well enough understood. Although I think it's starting to come into uh, into vogue. Uh, but but we must have a systems perspective. It's, uh, if you look at the components and we secure the components, it's still possible to create an insecure system from secure components based on how the systems uh, 
interact. Uh, it's much harder, but it's actually not an impossible goal to create a, ser a, a secure system from insecure components. In fact, all components will always be secure. Uh, to say you have secure components is, is, is itself probably an idealization. But uh, way back in the uh, early times, uh, Shannon proved that uh, we could get information perfectly through a channel that had noise. If you waited long enough and did enough repetitions in one thing or another, so creating a secure system out of insecure components would be something comparable to the Shannon information theory results. And um, say a little bit more about the science of uh, the incipient science of security later in the in the presentation. Anyway, any definition of IT security you want to take, for example, the confidentiality, in integrity, and availability definition has to be thought about in terms of relating to a system that includes all the components, the hardware, the software, the human systems that are involved, and the other components as well. If one focuses only on the software or only on the hardware, one has probably missed uh, many great sources of vulnerabilities. Um, the, uh, uh, and, and, and given all the situation and the immature state of any science supporting cybersecurity, uh, I'm sad to say that perfect cybersecurity is as likely as zero fatality automotive traffic. Uh, of course, now with self-driving cars on the on the scene, we might in fact be able to cut down greatly on the number of uh, auto, auto automobile fatalities. Uh, wouldn't it be nice if uh, science of security helped us cut down on the number of security violations over the next decade or two in the same fashion? But the point is, we certainly are far from perfection now, and I hope that all security activities put at least as much time planning for mitigating the failures that will occur as making our heroic attempt to prevent the failures in the first place. Uh, you know you're going to have to have both. So a balanced program has to has to concern itself with what do you do when the failure occurs, as well as how you do your best to present them. Um, failures, of course, can be embarrassment, like the ones I mentioned, or involve confidentiality, uh, integrity, or accessibility gaps, or seriously, more seriously, financial losses. Uh, companies that live on the web when their website is taken down by a DDoS can, in fact, uh, uh, experience significant financial loss. And now as we move into cyber-physical systems, uh, also known as the Internet of Things, uh, increasingly uh, loss of life becomes a possibility with uh, uh, major uh, cyber uh, intrusions of one sort or another. So uh, this is an increasingly important as we move into the Internet of Things times. Uh, everybody says you should do something like this. It, it's a matter of risk management. Uh, the, what's the likelihood of a, of a particular infraction and what damage could be done if it happened? If you just rank each of those one, two, three for low, medium, high, and multiply the two together, of course, you get a simplified matrix like this. Clearly, you should be focusing first on any uh, infractions that have a high likelihood and a high damage if they do happen. Well, that's, that's probably uh, taken care of in most people's minds. But I, I find that this is a, a more of a theoretical construct than, than a practical one right now because it's, it's, it's not easy to make these various assessments of what is likely to happen, what is the likelihood of various things happen, what are, what are the damages. Uh, probably, probably when and if we have a viable IT security insurance uh, industry, which people have tried to promote but hasn't happened uh, yet, but to my knowledge, uh, that's when the people who are professionals in risk management will will make serious endeavors to estimate likelihoods and estimate damages and uh, and and come up with things. But theoretically, this still seems like the right way to do it. It's just that it's awfully hard at the present state of development. 
well, what causes insecurity in our IT systems? Well, how about standard things like buffer overflow, which we tried to teach people how to avoid 50 years ago, and still code is written that doesn't check for buffer overflow, and still that causes the ability to hack into systems. Hardware errors, probably less frequent than software errors, but they can occur. Probably human error is even more frequent than software errors. Uh, insider crime has always been a possibility. Um, it was in the old days, before the internet, insider crime in most areas was considered to be more of a risk than outsider crime because the internet has opened up our systems to the outside world so much. Uh, insider crime is probably less important than it uh, in terms of percentage of in interactions than it's been in the past, but as the number of uh, security violations that have made the news over the last few years show, it is still a very important sort of source of insecurities. Social engineering, uh, phishing attacks, and other types of things that convince we gullible users to click on this uh, this particular link to see the dancing girls or uh, answer uh, uh, something from uh, apparently one of our trusted sources that is not from them at all. Uh, all. All sorts of social engineering issues are getting increasingly important. I asked my friends in uh, various uh, uh, trusted positions, confidential positions in IT security, uh, how these things rate together. And I had at least one person say that about a third of each insider crime, social engineering, and um, errors. Uh, I had somebody else more recently who suggested that uh, uh, given the gullibility of we humans and our increasing use of IT systems, that it may now be quarter, quarter, half. That is, a quarter of the... Uh, security breaks caused by the errors, another quarter caused by insider crime, and maybe a full half are getting to the point that it's caused by uh, us users uh, through social engineering activity. In any event, obviously all three of these sources are, are uh, important and need to be kept in mind. Uh, this is a, a relatively old list. Um, Botnets have been bothering us for a long time now. Uh, we see the state secret theft versus uh, commercial secret theft, uh, on the, on the, which means that the script kiddies are no longer front and center as they might have been 10 or 15 years ago. We have uh, uh, state access and commercial access of data theft and other types of, of break-ins, which has made this a much more professional activity. Certainly, we know it's a professional activity since the uh, US Department of Defense and probably other similar departments have now set up whole areas uh, to concern themselves with cyber warfare. So cyber crime and cyber warfare are now, are now on everybody's uh, radar screen for uh, important uh, dangers in the future. In the last few years, at least to my attention, only in the last few years has this new thing called ransomware become, uh, become prominent where people steal your data and offer to sell it back to you. So um, every few years I expect some new form of, uh, of misbehavior will continue to pop up like that and then we have to figure out how we respond to, uh, to that, new, that new situation. Well, these are our general areas. My question to you all who are concerned with the science facilities in particular is where, where are science facilities in all this? Um, uh, we're, we're, we're not as economically uh, uh, constrained. We're not as, as, as big an economic time as uh, uh, some company that lives on the web and loses millions of dollars per day if their website is down. Uh, much of the data that we uh, ultimately produce is going to be publicly available. So stealing the data, ransomware, well, if it's data we're working on, you could imagine that ransomware could, uh, uh, could be of concern, maybe is of concern to some of you. 
that um, uh, scientific data is, which is in the process of, uh, of being analyzed is, is stolen. One of the um, things which um, uh, people worry about in the dark of the night, but I haven't heard uh, any um, great existing problems yet, is with the, uh, the A dimension of uh, confidentiality uh, assurance or uh, X, well, integrity, the second one was what I was looking at, not availability, but integrity. Uh, it seems that uh, without without taking uh, precautions, uh, if if data can be uh, corrupted by by uh, malcontents, by by criminals of one sort or another, uh, obviously that could result in uh, scientific calculations that are incorrect based on corrupted data, and uh, whether whether at some point that will become enough of a problem that we would force us to uh, constantly encrypt our data and uh, put signatures in the encryption so that we can verify that the data has not been uh, uh, violated before computations are being made. Uh, I don't think many of us do that yet, and I hope we, I suspect we hope we don't have to, but uh, integrity is is at least a potential future problem for scientific facilities, I would suspect. Well, here's my uh, tongue-in-cheek comment from the title, uh, doing things right versus doing the right things. Um, doing the right things, that's doing science. That's what a scientific facility is in business for. Doing things right, well, that means doing what you can to prevent uh, insecure operations. And uh, clearly, it's a balancing act. A uh, dollar spent on security may be a dollar less for science, unless because you didn't spend those dollars on security, you your system is down and you can't do science for a protracted period of time. Then all of a sudden, the equation balances in the other direction. So economizing too much on cybersecurity certainly would be false economy if it results in the systems being down or causing other types of, uh, of problems. Um, how do we work on the very hard problem of maximizing the bang for the cybersecurity buck? Uh, buck? That's, that's clearly the goal. Uh, I'm, I'm sure most organizations uh, have more worry about under-investing than they do in over-investing. Uh, the the uh, pressures seem to push in that direction. If you, uh, if you uh, do your best to uh, modify the old science novel, crime novel maximum, where they said if you can't do the time, then don't do the crime, since you're going to be caught sooner or later, uh, for our case, it would be if you can't suffer the consequences of a particular hack, then do your best not to underinvest in that area, uh, because uh, you you certainly might get get caught. Uh, in any event, as we struggle in this um, pre-science of security times, uh, I suggest. As I've stated before, uh, keep the whole system in focus, not just the IT portion of the of the system, and pay attention to as much as you can to risk analysis and use that to help in your mitigation strategies, which you are also thinking about. One thing that I haven't mentioned before, but I, I will at this point in time, is uh, bad cops can be very useful. Uh, for a federal agency, the Office of Management and Budget can often be placed in, in the bad cop role. That is, the IT people in the federal organization may be uh, reluctant to inconvenience their users by uh, another security requirement, and they'll hold back. But if OMB from a distance tells the agencies you have to do such and such a security step, then the agency 
security people with their hat in hand go to their users and say, we're sorry we have to do this, but uh, OMB has told us we have to. We will work hard to make it as, as uh, unonerous as possible, but we're required to do it. Uh, having having the, the bad cop that, uh, that uh, makes the decision and then you are forced to do the implementation can sometimes help lower resistance of, uh, of scientists and others who simply have work to do and look at uh, security preparation as a way of slowing them down rather than assisting them in getting their job done. Well, those are a few of my random thoughts. Now let's uh, switch to um, what, what the federal agencies, at least, have been thinking about in terms of research for a next generation of IT security. Perhaps some of you haven't heard the NIDRD acronym, which is Networking and Information Technology Research and Development. It is an interagency program under the Office of Science and Technology Policy that coordinates IT, R&D at about 20 U.S. federal agencies. You'd be welcome to check out the, uh, their www.nitr.gov site for more information. Currently, that website will show you that over $4 billion annually in agency R&D investments are occurring, and that includes uh, more than $700 million annual uh, expenditures in the group that I mentioned before, computer security and information assurance. Uh, that is by far the most rapidly expanding area of research in in IT that the federal government has uh, has at the present time. For for obvious reasons, it's an, an increasingly general uh, general concern to all of us. Um, several years ago, now five years ago, I guess, after several years of concentrated study, the uh, agency uh, specialists in cybersecurity research uh, created and published the plan that you see the front page on here, Trustworthy Cyberspace, a Strategic Plan for Federal Cybersecurity Research and Development. Uh, that's still good reading, by the way. You can find it electronically on the NIDRD website that was previously mentioned. I'll mention a few highlights, and then I'll mention why it's still still good reading uh, a little bit further in the in the discussion. It highlights research themes that uh, that our investigators figured out were uh, important opportunities for uh, develop for for attacking at this time. Uh, trusted, uh, tailored, trustworthy spaces, moving targets, cyber economic incentives, designed in security. I'll say a little bit more about these on subsequent slides. I'm just naming them here. Uh, as I've mentioned before, the idea of can we can we move to a science of cybersecurity? This is something that in in all areas of IT that I've watched over my my career, it's been. It's been great to watch the movement from uh, a bag of tricks to an assembled bag of tricks to then a science which results from the activity. In the late uh, 50s and early 60s, we, we changed uh, computer languages and compilers from a bag of tricks to a pretty coherent set of, uh, of uh, scientific principles. We did the same thing in the late 60s and early 70s with operating systems and ended up with a somewhat of a science of operating systems. We've done it in later times with data with uh, uh, new new techniques such as uh, relational databases and uh, which had a, a better theoretical base and uh, object-oriented programming and information hiding, uh, so on and so forth. So uh, in all areas of uh, that I've been involved with, I've watched the progression from uh, a bag of tricks to the development of the science, and uh, would be certainly hopeful that we're seeing the early signs of the same progress in cybersecurity. Um, there are many national priorities, uh, national projects 
that that would greatly benefit from uh, improved cybersecurity. And I'll say one thing about that. And an uh, area that uh, is always of concern in, in any development uh, called the Valley of Death. Uh, how does how do uh, research results get translated into the marketplace uh, products and services that become available to implement the latest findings? Uh, I'll say uh, something about each of those. I won't say everything that appears on each of these slides, but I'll certainly leave the slides with you and, and again, commend the, uh, the, uh, that report to your reading if uh, you want to pursue any of these particular areas. Taylor Trustworthy Spaces has as a paradigm um, supporting context-specific trust decisions. Uh, one size fits all internet is just not uh, uh, viable anymore. And if we can make on the fly, um, as opposed to having air gap secure networks, if we could partition out parts of the networks, basing our decisions on verifiable assertions and then being able to set up the requirements to, uh, to have increased levels of trust where necessary. Uh, that's, a, that's a viable activity right now, as you can see in the list of examples that, uh, that the various uh, agencies are working on this type of, a, uh, this type of development. Moving target, well, uh, resilience through agility and continued safe operation in a compromised environment are two of the paradigms. Uh, having the having the buffers be at the same location in all in all uh, memory configurations is a perfect example of the way that you open the door for buffer uh, overflow situations. Uh, so if if we could have our uh, our core loads the variable, have random numbers that, that put the buffers here sometimes and put the buffers there sometimes, uh, perhaps uh, that's an example of, um, of, of having uh, uh, more variety in our actual software configurations, making it more difficult for, uh, for hacks to occur. Of course, I'm aware that in some cases, adding that additional complexity into the, uh, into the software itself can cause uh, breakdowns of one sort or another. So it's a, it's a question of how do you uh, how do you uh, make the, make your system more complicated and uh, still still have a preferred or uh, improved operation. I mentioned earlier um, cyber insurance. Uh, that's an example of a, a cyber economic incentive. Um, the the idea of um, uh, at the moment we're we're still in the in the the the, the early stages of uh, it's too embarrassing where possible a company uh, any entity will would prefer not to admit that it has been hacked uh, especially in a commercial environment where maybe that lowers trust and will send customers to a to a competitor. So the idea of keeping confidential your um, in, infractions, the, the, the incursions that have been made into your system is still, still practiced where possible. Um, and that means we don't learn from each other's mistakes. If, if the uh, economic consequences of such mistakes can be quantified and if an insurance industry would, would develop whereby you pay your premiums to mitigate the losses in, uh, in the case of a, of a break-in, then, of course, the insurance industry would probably make sure that uh, you were following good security practices in order to give you good, rate, good insurance rates. Uh, and uh, so if, if that could, could get established, we could probably uh, have an incentive, a uh, practical economic incentive for better practices to have lower insurance rates, which would re could result in, in fewer security violations. So uh, again, economic incentives is 
not been easy to to come about, but I expect with time that will that will come about. What do you find if we started to develop systems with design insecurity rather than putting a bag on a system after it has already been developed? Um, we're trying to do that, but uh, especially as the Internet of Things rolls out and more cyber physical systems come about, it seems in many cases that the uh, the developers of these new systems uh, aren't familiar with the needs of of uh, designed insecurity, and uh, we perpetuate the habits from the past of uh, of thinking about security afterwards. Uh, Insofar as we can start thinking about security up front rather than as an add-on, we'll do a, a lot toward uh, improving our situation, I think. There are a number of national initiatives that would greatly benefit from, uh, from increased cybersecurity. Health IT uh, is, uh, is something that we're all looking for, health IT systems, uh, security, HIPAA, Privacy requirements are, are one thing that, uh, that are always on the doctor's mind when you go and have to sign sign forms about who gets to see your medical information. The smart grid as a cyber physical system is a, an important item, uh, especially as we worry about security violations that could take down the power grid or compromise it in other fashions. Um, transportation, well, self-driving cars, uh, or just the fact that uh, now any any automobile, I'm, I was at a, at a workshop recently where it was pointed out that even before you consider self-driving cars, the cost of a new high-end car is 50% IT hardware and software and only 50% uh, steel and other traditional materials. So IT has, has already invaded transportation, such as cars, and, and that's, a, that's a good example of an area that uh, has, has understood safety engineering uh, a lot better than understood security engineering, since they didn't have to worry about that in the, the pre-internet uh, computer car days. Uh, that's getting more and more concern, so uh, uh, better security will help us have a better transportation system. Trusted identities, well, that's actually part of a secure, uh, uh, secure IT infrastructure. If we, if we can learn to trust the identities, we, uh, we will uh, be better off. Um, the government has, in several times, stood up a cybersecurity education. Uh, NICE was the name of one uh, uh, national initiative for uh, cybersecurity education. Um, uh, universities are, are working diligently to make sure that cybersecurity is the part is, is a an important part of all computer science programs. Uh, we need we need education, increased education for professionals, and we of course need increased education for the public to resist phishing attacks and, and other things. Uh, so uh, an increased effort in cybersecurity education is part of our, our broad attack on cybersecurity. Mentioned several times developing scientific foundations to inform the field of cybersecurity. Uh, many universities and many uh, agencies are working diligently on this. I'll simply mention the uh, interesting thought of using the uh, uh, the human immune system as a paradigm. What can we learn from the fantastically complicated and interesting way our immune system fights off viruses and other types of infections? Uh, can we uh, apply those biological lessons provided by Mother Nature to improve our uh, uh, resiliency and uh, ability to uh, have secure IT systems? Uh, the chasm always exists between research and operations. The, 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 uh, our society at large, I think, for the last several decades has been working in general to uh, accelerate transition from theory to practice by uh, 
by, by all of the incubators and research parks that universities have stood up to emulate Silicon Valley and other uh, uh, areas where uh, university people are encouraged to privatize their research uh, themselves, creating small companies. Uh, that's, that's one good example. Uh, any other ways that we can find to, uh, to put the most promising research results into, um, uh, into practice uh, uh, is, is something that's uh, extremely important. An effort was made a few years ago under the name of the Computer Security Research Institute, which was uh, uh, putting together a number of private firms pooling their interests and doing what they could to support the development of research. Uh, I believe that may, uh, may have um, been very dependent on individuals who were involved, individuals who have retired now, so uh, I, I won't pursue that further because I think it may be an effort that did not go forward. Well, the reason why I think that this report that has these things is still um, still important is that um, we were asked by OSTP to evaluate that uh, program back then and uh, so a whole new report was written and it's only two years old came out in 2014 report on implementing the federal cybersecurity research and development strategy uh, asked to access assess the strategic plan several years after it was formed and to look for additions or deletions to the agenda. Well, obviously, it turned out that the, um, the, the, uh, the people in, involved in doing this uh, analysis um, concluded that, yes, it's still quite a viable the, the, the strategic plan was still informing agency investments in security with two uh, notable additions. Um, the term cyber physical systems, which is closely related to, if not identical, with the Internet of Things, um, the connection of the physical world with the, uh, with the um, uh, cyber world, uh, was not identified at that at that time as particularly important. Uh, obviously, it is now. And at that time, privacy was just coming into its uh, co-partnership with IT security. So uh, this is a, one of the pages from from that uh, that second report. But roughly speaking, the second report says that with those uh, additional focal points. Uh, it's still a viable agenda that's informing the federal investments in and research in IT security at this point. So I note that uh, the science of cybersecurity that we're trying to develop is harder than the previous successes that I've mentioned, like compilers, operating systems, databases, networking, etc. Probably harder because it's more explicitly uh, a bigger system involving the people as well as the, the computer uh, components themselves. Uh, it's clear that the escalating war between the bad guys and the good guys is continuing. The quicker we can get to a cyber science, uh, the quicker I think it will help us uh, defend our systems. Uh, when bad publicity happens, um, it's uh, it can be helpful in raising everyone's um, uh, awareness of the importance of the subject and the need to, uh, to invest properly. Uh, but if a disaster happens, uh, a cyber disaster, then, then, then society responds too quickly uh, and often too simplistically. Uh, so, God forbid a cyber disaster, but just enough bad publicity to let people know that this is something that we need to pay increased attention to. So, it is an immature and ever-changing discipline, like the rest of computing, and we see through a glass darkly, and we just have to accept that we're 
we're struggling to uh, to make things better. Uh, I call your attention finally to cloud computing, uh, which has been called the industrialization of IT. Uh, to what extent are we, in effect, outsourcing all of our IT activities? My guess is that the scientific facilities are among the last uh, of those to, to seriously consider such things because uh, scientific facilities tend to be so unique and um, industrialization happens where great commonalities can, uh, can add to economies of scale and make things cheaper. It's clear to me that uh, large providers, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, whatever, can employ many more security experts than individual universities, colleges, or research programs, or research facilities. So it's conceivable to me that um, as if cloud computing continues to take over uh, increased bulk of, uh, of uh, computing activities, it might well be the industrialization of cybersecurity as well. I don't expect scientific facilities to be on the front end of full adoption of cloud computing. On the other hand, it's clear that that is already beginning. So cloud computing, in addition to these other research as, a, as an infrastructure change, might be an important dimension of the future, as well as a more secure base of, uh, of science on which to fund our cybersecurity developments. With that, I believe I have reached the end of my presentations and would be very happy to uh, take any questions that, uh, that you may want to try to throw at me. Great. Thanks, George. Uh, while, while people are typing, I'll go over a couple of points. First, um, we have a survey. I'll just post it here in the chat so you can access it by hyperlink. If you wouldn't mind, uh, please filling out our survey and letting us know what you thought of the presentation and if you have any suggested uh, topics or presenters for future presentations. To view presentations, uh, you, you can join the discuss mailing list, or to view presentations, join the discuss mailing list, or submit requests to present. You can visit us at trustedci.org/webinars. Our next webinar is actually going to be in December. We're going to skip the November slot because of the winter holidays, and we're going to have the December presentation a little earlier at uh, on December 12th. And the topic will be the CICI Regional Cybersecurity Collaboration Project. This is going to be a team presentation. We're still working on the, uh, the people who will be presenting. And we'll have more information about that once we have more information to announce, of course. And the registration for that will be coming uh, probably in a few weeks. We'll see. Um, having said all that, do we have any more Questions for, for George? Oh, we got someone typing. Uh, we've got one question from Jennifer. What surprised you the most in the changes you've seen in cybersecurity? Well, let's see. Um, I guess looking looking over the course of, of things, I'm most surprised when um, Situations move more rapidly than I expected them to. Uh, as an example, those of us who were working on the uh, promulgation of the Internet 25 years ago were 
knew it would knew it would take off and knew it would be important, but didn't think it would happen within the next five years the way it did. Uh, and I think I'm surprised that uh, that internet security has become as big a problem as rapidly as it has. Obviously, it's because the internet took off more rapidly than we expected, and adequate attention had not been declared to uh, put on the security. So um, the fact that things are moving in society in general, things move more slowly than I expect, and I'm always wishing they would move faster. Uh, I certainly, in this case, wish that uh, security break-ins and, and problems hadn't uh, occurred as rapidly or become as large as they have. Uh, as that. So, so I think the, uh, the, the increased magnitude of the problem and the fact that we just have to uh, direct more and more resources to uh, uh, shaping up this obviously uh, crucial infrastructure, uh, the, the speed of transition to the problems as well as the good things that IT is bringing us is uh, somewhat surprising to me. We've got a question from Dick Wilson. Would name data networking NDN provide better security? Well, certainly some people think so. And um, that, that may be part of the um, uh, first uh, bullet that was mentioned in terms of trusted, trusted subspaces. Uh, you, you can imagine that uh, Things like NDN couldn't take over everything right away, but if we had a way to uh, to identify portions and dynamically put in portions of the internet to do such a thing, and if things work better, then that's a perfect experiment that might see might see expansion. So, so yes, I I think that's uh, that's that's something that some people are hopeful about. Looks like we've got another one coming in. Here we go, from Denise. Uh, would you define science of security as the qualification of reduced risk against possible attacks? Or, sorry, quantification. Would you define science of security as the quantification of reduced risk against possible attacks? Well, I, w I would certainly say that that should be one of the outcomes. It's one of the preferred outcomes. Uh, to, to, and, and usually classification is one of the first steps of a science uh, trying to figure out what's, what's making the world tick in a given area. So, uh, but then moving beyond classification, looking for the models and mechanisms that uh, not only explain the classification but uh, help us mitigate those risks in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the ultimate case. We've got a couple of minutes left. Do we have any other last-minute questions? We've got someone typing here. Okay, well, just a reminder again, uh, the November presentation is going to be uh, pushed back to December because of the holiday season, and uh, look out for registration information for the December 12th presentation on CICI Regional Cybersecurity Collaboration Projects. Um, with that, I think we are, we are done with this presentation. George, thank you so much for presenting today. My pleasure, and best of luck to all of you who are on the, in the trenches on this very important subject. Great. Well, uh, thank you, everybody, and uh, we will be in touch with the next presentation.